what's up everybody? I'm Joel Madden and this is Artist Friendly. On this episode, I'll be sitting down with singer, songwriter, producer, and frontman of the band Military Gun, Ian Shelton. Let's go. I think I was pretty compliant when I was a teenager. I was uh, like a total nerd, like, but rebellious just basically in the way of dressing and right and getting in trouble at school but not like i didn't need no prompt to get out of bed nothing like that oh, i just, right. I just did it up. you know that was it i, I had to go yeah no other options so well, how were you a nerd uh i just always so you, you liked learning uh not not like learning in the school sense oh, okay liked learning in the whatever was interested me right. at the time like right i know like i go through periods right so it's like oh, for a while it's movies and, right. and then and then you subcategories like all right i was obsessed with this director obsessed with this whatever and then like music it's like yeah i get into genres and artists and then deep dive and then like learn everything and then be like now i'll never listen to that again right i'm over it which is learning yeah, yeah. So I like it's learning, but only when it's not, not in the mastering, school Mastering, mastering like subjects you are interested in. Yeah. So even if, like you could say a band or a genre, and then you go all the way to the end of the rabbit hole. You find the band that the band that influenced the band. Yeah, and yeah. You go deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper, and then you get on the other side of it, and you've like you basically learn so much that it becomes that you learn that what they're doing is a cheap trick, and then yeah. you're like, I'm out. I'm good. Yeah, demystifies. That's the only thing about music. It's unfortunate. That's unfortunate when you see behind the curtain. I have this this conversation with um, my brother's wife. Cameron is a uh, a big actress, right? Mm-hmm. So so obviously been at, been in movies for decades, and we talk about this. She says I can't watch a movie without hearing the writing. Mm. seeing the cameras behind she's like i just see two i've done i've done it for so long and her brain i think acclimates towards how Mm -hmm. like how did they do that yeah yeah and i think she's like i can't watch a movie without thinking definitely i mean the same thing with my i've directed a lot of music videos and now i think uh with like an ad brain i think about the budget of the thing which is this which is the last thing you should be thinking about when you're watching something that's artistic yeah but like i'm like all right, so this movie's actually five locations. We're going to go location A and then location B. You'll see location C, but we're going to go back to location A. And it's like, I think about the budget breakdown like an AD while watching movies. And it's like the last thing that I should be doing. Like you're the maker. Yeah. So it's like someone eating food that's a chef is going to taste it differently than just little old me. I'm going to eat it and go, oh, this is good. Yeah, yeah. And maybe I'll taste some flavors, but I'll be like, just tastes good, you know? Um, but a chef would be like more critical. What I think you're saying, it goes beyond like the technical, which is like the vibe and the, yeah, so the, the intangibles, the intangibles that create a whole picture. And I struggle with that to because I can be too judgmental and miss things because I'm like, nah, that's not, that's fake. You know? Yeah, that's not authentic. Uh, yeah, yeah. Which authenticity, like, as you learn as you get older, it can also be like an affectation. You can fake the authenticity. Like like some people, you'll learn, I found, that like they're just really good at mirroring you so that you don't know what their actual personality is, but they do it long enough that you get tricked. I had, I had that happen recently where I was like, someone I thought was really genuine, I was like, oh, no, you're actually a sociopath. <laughs> like yeah, You're a psycho. You're a psycho. Yeah, this is like a very, very weird thing. It's a new thing for me to learn that authenticity could just be, the authenticity in quotes could be an affectation. Yeah, I didn't know we were going to go here today, but I love it. Um, <laughs> maybe there's something we do when we think we need something from someone. Like mm-hmm. Maybe there's something in people where if they have an idea of you mm-hmm. and they have a relationship with that idea of you, especially think about this, you're in a band. So you're going to meet people that have a preconceived idea of who you are based on your art Definitely, that you made at a small portion of time, period of time that doesn't actually reflect your whole life Mm -hmm. or the whole sum of who you are. But it is what you've captured in that time, put out into the world, and then it becomes the bigger part of who you are to the rest of the world. So you could say like with my music, 
your perception of me might be what you know of my music or whatever, but that's actually the smallest pieces of me and little periods of time that don't reflect actually the whole, the whole life, yeah, yeah, the definitely. whole person. We get these really narrow ideas of people from social media, from art, from, from however they project out into the world. Yeah. And then we kind of attach that idea that we've, we've, we've put a flavor on it. That's, that's chocolate, that's vanilla, that's mint chocolate chip, that's Rocky Road, that's mm -hmm. cookies and cream. And like, that's what our idea is. And it's actually not true. Well, because that's presentation and presentation yeah. is different than authenticity or anything else. And like, I think about it. I mean, I like we post on the band socials, but like as far as what I post from my, I like having a private life. I yeah, like yeah, not yeah. nobody knowing what I'm doing until I'm presenting it to them. Yeah. Because the presentation gets in the way of living an authentic life most of the time. And so you're like, I'll, when I release a record, that's something that I'm ready. That's a presentation that is meant for the public where yeah. everything else is like not that you know and then when you get to meet someone authentically where they don't have a perception of you that's a different experience yeah then when you get to meet someone where you might have a perception of each other yeah well i was even just referring to i there was i had a good friend that i just was like i feel like all of a sudden the, the curtain got pulled up and i was like oh shit like this is crazy so it's less so on the like day-to-day -day meeting people because of the band perception how long thing. were you were friends with them uh i mean like probably like five six years yeah it's long enough yeah and then you're like and then oh, enough, different person. you know the dominoes mm -hmm. start falling you're like whoa you've been like lying this whole time you know that's always weird isn't it it is well i don't understand i have like a very weird binary brain and so like lie like lying i what definitely you? have done it before i've done it you know the same as anyone else but it's like the idea of like, oh, I'm going to tell a lie is like a crazy concept. Like to, right. to like know that you're lying. Because I think there's times, and it's a lot of what I sing about on our record, which is like this, I didn't understand what I actually was feeling and not feelings change. And like you change as a person, which then makes a liar out of you over time. Mm -hmm. But like to instantly go into a situation and know that you're lying mm. uh, is not something that I opt to do. I don't, I don't think, you know, like to start with a lie. Yeah. To, to know that you're lying is crazy. Right. And then you're like the type of person that can do that is a very dangerous person. It's scary to me. I don't know. The idea yeah. that you're willing is crazy. Yeah. I, I never thought about that. I wondered on your record, especially the last one, I was wondering this. Are you singing about plutonic relationships or are you singing about romantic relationships? Are you singing about the relationship? There's a couple different relationships we have, right? Yeah. There's the relationship we have with ourself. So sometimes I can be singing to me. Yeah, definitely. There's the relationship we have with the world or society. I could be singing at that. Mm -hmm. There's a plutonic relationship we have with like people we interact with, friends, mm -hmm. are, are like our more interpersonal relationships, family. Um, and then there's the romantic relationship, which is a different relationship. Yeah, yeah. On your record, are you, is there one relationship? Is there, who are you singing to? Cause I, I can't quite make sense of it. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's, it's good, kinda, a good way. It's kind of all the above. I mean, it's like so much about friendship. It's so much about love. It's so much like about the crossroads of all those things and definitely romantic in some ways. I mean, it's more of a breakup record in the like latter half in the talking about like not fully understanding your own feelings. And because of that, you you end up hurting other people and yeah. like but even then in, in a platonic way you could do that as well like like the way you carry yourself through the world and the way that you like don't expend your time for people because you're too busy in your own head and uh yeah for me it was like i mean i think a large large amount of the jumping point was romantic but then just letting it bleed into everything else like the last song on the record is called life under the gun and it's so much i love that song it's so much it's about a great song just your feelings changing you know, and like acknowledging how like for myself being like manic and crazy and like choosing to burn my life down at times and then like starting something new and then being like, wait, shit, this isn't what I wanted either. And then um, and then being like, can I move forward into the next situation of my life without having that be like overburdening on the next thing? It's like moving, actually moving on and, and not letting like past things like 
fuck up the next thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's a real thing. Did you have a bad breakup? Not a bad breakup. Just one that I felt uncomfortable with my own actions. And, and so much, again, like is about making mistakes. And like I grew up around really flawed people. I grew up going to AA with my mom. And, mm -hmm. and uh, so I just grew up around flawed people. And because of that, uh, I've like the culture surrounding mistakes has obviously changed largely in, in the world. And right. I wanted to kind of sing about it from a first person perspective. Cause I think we've kind of lost that. It's like a lot of just pointing the finger at other people. Mm. And I feel like specifically men, so few people like seem to have any moment of self-reflection about their own way that they act in relationships mm. and whether that be romantic, platonic, anything, but you're just like trying to, reassess the way that you see yourself in the world and and acknowledge that mistakes are like inherent and hurting people is kind of inherent as far as the human experience goes and i don't know just trying to like change the culture in whatever way i can surrounding the concept of mistakes and and yeah. hurting other people not that it's like a thing that like needs to be instantly forgiven but it's just like you know not enough people talk about regret in a way that's like transparent we are kind of at a time where everybody's laundry is out on the street. Yeah. Right? Like that's just where we're at. And if it's not, it will be. Yeah. Like we live in a time where every everyone shares everything and it can be chaotic, it can be dangerous, it can be it's a double-edged sword. Yeah. So on the good is less people can get away with things, which is a good thing. Yes. Then that's on the is. other side, there's also the idea that people can accuse other people and it's like the culture we live in now is if anything picks up steam with a bunch of people assessing uh, and deciding that this is the truth, mm -hmm. then it is just, it is what it is. Regardless of, Regardless of a facts. week or two later or a month later or a year later, the facts come to light and it was all a lie. It, everyone's already moved on and that's been stamped on that person. 100%, and yeah. they got a red letter and then that's just the court of public opinion and all this. I think we're entering a time of mindfulness. I know I love my kids. But I also found the first five years of parenting, I thought I was the first parent on the planet. <laughs> right? So I was like, yeah. we're doing this. It's this new concept, this, this method or this thing. So it's like, which is normal. Like, mm -hmm. like, it's normal for people who are especially overachievers in some way, or they want to achieve something yeah. to overdo it. So I'm very open to the idea that I probably overdid it the first few years of parenting because I was really trying hard because I had no... yeah model well you try to i i think about it for, i don't have kids i i don't think i don't plan on having kids and but i think about it in the way of like oh i would love to like break the cycles you know yeah. and and then you're like well it would be pure vanity to have a kid just for that, that yeah. reason but uh <laughs> but it's like uh my that perfect I, little experiment i could see myself going overboard in that way i go i go overboard about everything so like well, that's I, because I got at, one way we're, we're, when we're apples from the attic tree yeah when we fall off that tree we have all the tendencies that um i may not be an alcoholic but i certainly have the tendencies I certainly have an addictive personality. And I have an addictive I personality. I can get addicted to anything. Yeah, me too. So we're likely very similar. That's probably why our music resonated with you. Yeah. Not just your experience with not having a dad. I think that's the starting point, right? When you find someone who shared a similar experience and they speak of it in simple terms that you can understand yeah. and relate to. There's a kindredness there that like, I think... Good Charlotte had a very, uh, it has a very simple, honest approach to like how we say things. Yeah, yeah. And I think that was a function of us not having a lot of time to develop. We literally just came out. And that's, that's to me, I, I talk about it a lot with trying, like, I think that it's like the cool guy thing to really like censor yourself to like, yeah. keep, you just put dirt and dirt and dirt over the the true meaning of something mm -hmm. so that you don't ever have to be held accountable to what that expression is and when things are stated plainly there's nowhere to hide there's nowhere to hide and i prefer that way like i wish that people talked about lyrics more because then i'd be like oh shit uh, you know like i want to be on my heels and be like well yeah. i said that and i was hoping nobody would ever ask about it because i can't think of a way to hide it or whatever yeah. you know and like yeah i don't know I, I i respect the i just think that like my early stages of being into music and then getting into like punk and hardcore like in the like more obscure sense the more pretentious sense 
um, cool guyness really got in the way of, of expression. I think about a lot of the records that I first came up with in their way that they were speaking is so much more like what I still connect to rather than a lot of those like really gnarly punk records because they're covering up what they're trying to say by being whether I mean a lot of this shit is just like traditional like you know like the stabbed in the back song and all that yeah, shit yeah. you know like which never has really done too much for me but it's like oh the records I originally liked had so much more emotional depth and then I went away from that for like pretentiousness to some degree. 